Wallace and welcome to our digital innovation series with AWS. Now, for most merchants, payment processing is an essential cost of doing business. With increased competition and interchange regulation impacting fees, payment providers must pivot to compete and deliver revenue. So on the line to guide us through this topic and highlight some of the ways in which this can be achieved is Anant Gupta, Digital Innovation Lead, Financial Services, APEC at AWS. So welcome Anant, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Hannah, for having me. No problem at all, it's good to have you on. So yes, taking all of that into account, how can payment providers compete and deliver revenue? Let's start there. Yeah, sure. So. As a service, payments processing is getting more and more commoditized. This puts pressure on processing fees that payments companies can charge to merchants, which hurts profit margins. If they're going to stay relevant, acquirers and payment service providers need to find new ways to help merchants. One approach some payments companies have been taking is to make it easier for merchants to accept more forms of payment. PayU in India, for example, helps merchants accept over 100 payment options and their pricing model allows small businesses to get set up without paying large upfront expenses. This expands the ecosystem of digital payments because it helps merchants adapt and support all of the new ways their customers might wanna pay, whether it's a plastic card, mobile wallet, QR code, link, website, or app. The other trend AWS is seeing is companies looking beyond their core payment businesses to help merchants through value-added services. It's hard to run a small company and many merchants don't have the spare time, resources, or expertise to optimize and grow their business. So if payments companies offered solutions to help merchants grow and operate more effectively, they could create new revenue streams for themselves on top of their core transaction services. In fact, a recent study from Bain, the consulting firm, indicates that this trend is going to reshape the industry. They forecast that in 10 years, value-added services will grow to as much as 50 to 80% of a merchant acquirer's profit in the US. To take part in this trend, payments businesses will need to build flexible and integrated systems and break down silos between their applications so they can build and adapt more quickly. This can be hard to do, especially if you're dealing with multiple legacy systems and processes. But some AWS customers are using cloud to innovate quickly and at scale, growing beyond traditional processing to offer services like payroll, marketing, loyalty, invoicing, and even lending. And AWS expects more companies will find success through similar means. All right, and of course, transaction data is a rich, untapped source of opportunity, isn't it? So how can payment providers help merchants leverage these data assets, enabling them to realize uh, the real value of analytics? And what sort of organizations do they need to become to really reap the benefits? What about that? Yeah, payments companies have a lot of transaction data. and that can reveal valuable insights about how a business is doing and how customers behave. And this creates an opportunity to offer unique value-added services to merchants if they're delivered in a way that merchants can use. The challenge for small merchants today is that even if they have data, it can be hard to make sense of that information to make confident decisions and take action. If I'm a merchant, I might have a sales dashboard that shows that 80% of my sales comes from 10% of my products. That's great, but now what do I do about that? Should I change my product displays, create some special offers? Unless you can dig deeper and build content and context around the data, this information is interesting, but I can't really do anything with it. To really help small businesses, payments providers could focus on bridging the gap between interesting and actionable and helping merchants make informed decisions. This means they might have to rethink their relationship to merchants entirely. For example, Rather than being a passive service provider to small businesses, what if you were a proactive partner? Could you identify areas to improve and recommend next steps to help the merchant prioritize their activities? What if you went further? What if you weren't just a proactive partner, but you were part of the team? What if you didn't just recommend next steps, but automatically performed some of them for the merchant, like operating a rewards program or protecting against fraud? Fraud.net, for example, uses data and machine learning to identify potential fraud and then automatically trigger specific actions based on that information. Transaction data has the potential to be a powerful tool for merchants and a key ingredient to help payments companies shift to a value-added services business model, but the industry is only scratching the surface in making use of it. According to research from the ICE Group and Icon Solutions, 
Only 9% of major banks monetize transaction data. But now, with cloud, payments businesses have the resources and opportunity to aggregate, store, and analyze data and build applications around that data to make life easier for small business customers. This is a big change for a lot of payments companies, but there are more reasons to be encouraged because the cloud is making it much more cost effective and easy to build and deliver analytic solutions. There's an amazing amount of analytics being done on the cloud today, powered by services like Amazon Redshift to warehouse data, Amazon Athena and Kinesis for analytics, and machine learning services like Amazon SageMaker to deliver predictive insights. All right, so that's interesting. Could you share with us then maybe some use cases you've seen from payment companies providing merchants with data back, uh, data back propositions to improve services to customers and drive efficiencies to operations and also maybe some outcomes perhaps? Yeah, absolutely. AWS has a couple of customers who stand out here. The first helps restaurants accept and process payments, but they also use data and Amazon machine learning to help restaurants take action to improve their business. For example, they can predict how many diners to expect on a given night and help restaurants identify which menu items should be cut and which should be promoted more. Because they've contextualized data and translated information into possible action, it's a lot easier for a restaurant to know what to do to improve. The second company helps businesses digitize their global supply chains. Companies can find and engage suppliers they need from around the world and manage their payments on a single platform. If you're a supplier, you want to get paid quickly and predictably. And so this company uses, uses transaction data to, among other things, offer financing to suppliers, which lets them get paid on their invoices early and use those funds to run their business. These two companies operate in very different markets and industries, but I love what they're doing because they're both showing the value of thinking beyond the payment and solving for the needs of their customers. Brilliant. Well, I think it's safe to say watch this space. A lot of good work at AWS in this area. But uh, for now, and we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for calling in and sharing your insights. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah, for having me.